Images, rituals, and hymns all nourish our faith. This is perhaps most evident at Easter. While hymns have fallen on rough times lately, being displaced by choruses, hymns communicate doctrine and tradition in a much more powerful and condensed manner. They're a major source for how we imaginatively conceive of our faith, they help us to worship and observe the liturgical year, and they help link us to the rich 2,000-year tradition of the Christian faith. This Easter, what I would like to do is devotionally contemplate one of the best-known hymns associated with Easter time, Salve Festa Dies, or Hail Thee Festive Day. My name is David Paris, and you're watching the Caffeinated Bible, and the goal of this channel is to equip you to read, interpret, and apply your Bible in a much more engaged and informed manner. So if you find these videos beneficial, you know what to do. Subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and share it with the people that you know. I really thought I would do this Sunday's video on this hymn and the history of it because last week I gave a review of this Bible, the New King James Ancient Modern Bible, which connects you with the rich history of biblical interpretation. So I thought for this Sunday, it's only appropriate if I do something that links us with that tradition as well. Now I'm giving away this particular Bible, and if you want a chance to win it, see the instructions down below, and also take a look at this video. I'll have a link to it here, but take a look at last week's video if you're interested in that. One final note, I'm giving away something else this week, so watch for this week's video as well. This hymn, Hail Thee Festive Day, or Salve Festa Days, has a very long and rich history to it. It was originally written as a poem by Venatius Fortunas, a 6th century monk who went on to rise to the office of Bishop of Portier. Fortunatus authored more than 250 poems, and he was really a transitional person between the classical world of the Roman Empire and medieval Europe. In classical Rome and Greece, the rebirth of nature during spring was seen as evidence of a God-renewing life on earth, and oftentimes it was worshipped in itself. This was an idea that was not adopted within the early church. Fortunatus, though, repurposed all this classical imagery from nature, all the mysterious movements of nature which caused ancient man to wonder and rejoice were given new meaning in his poem. They speak about Christ's resurrection. In his poem, Fortunatus linked the fecundity of spring with the resurrection in a very original manner. Instead of seeing God or Jesus as blessing the land with new life, in this hymn, the abundance of new life in nature is depicted as bearing witness to Jesus' resurrection. Fortunatus pairs the fair beauty of earth from the death of the winter and arising with the resurrection and the victory over death. Hymnologist Ruth Ellis Messenger notes that Fortunatus is the first on record in Christian hymnology to do this. Now his original poem, was over 150 lines long, or 55 strophes. The first 40 of these lines focused on how springtime is a symbol of praise to the Lord. He writes, Lo, our earth is in her spring, bearing thus her witness, that with her Lord she has all her gifts restored. For now the woods with their leaves and the meadows with their flowers pay homage to Jesus' triumph, over the gloomy tomb. The next 40 lines then turn to the theme of Jesus' incarnation. He writes, Nor wouldst thou be content to be born, but being born in the flesh, in the same wouldst thou suffer death. In the original poem, the last 30 lines extolled the virtue of his bishop, Felix. This section was dropped from many of the adaptations of his poem for liturgical use. In fact, the poem was so long that it had to be heavily redacted so it could function as a hymn. However, in this section where he extolled Felix, he also espoused the virtue of baptism. Elements of this are still seen in the hymn today. O King Divine, lo, hear a bright ray of thy triumph, the souls made pure by thy holy font, the white robed troop comes from the limpid waters, and the old inequity is cleansed in the new stream. 
Salve Festa Days was quickly adopted in the church for use as a processional hymn. A processional hymn is usually sung at the beginning of service when the clergy of the choir process into the church behind a cross at the start of the service. By the 12th century, Salve Festa Days was used as a processional hymn in many cathedrals around Europe. It spread as far as the cathedral at York in England and was included in the Sarum Missal, which was developed at Salisbury Cathedral in England around 1078 AD. The impact and adoption of this poem as a hymn can be seen how the opening line, Salve Festa Days, Hail Thee Festive Day, was used in numerous other hymns, most of which only contain this opening line. During the English Reformation, Thomas Cramner translated one version of this hymn into English in 1544. He wrote to King Henry VIII, I have translated to make the verses in English only for proof to see how it would do so in song. Cranmer was experimenting to see how he could take this Latin hymn and then translate it into English for worship purposes. His experiment was probably the first translation of this hymn into English. This hymn is best known today in the English-speaking world by the hymn, Hail Thee, Festive Day, that Ralph Vaughan Williams composed and scored the music for in the English hymnal in 1906. At the very beginning, I said that hymns communicate a great deal of theology in a very condensed form. I have gone through some of that in this video already as well. Now, the current form of this hymn, Hail Thee, Festive Day, is usually sung on Easter Day and then throughout the season of Easter. The theology contained in this hymn demonstrates why. The opening refrain is powerful. Hail Thee, Festive Day, Blessed Day that art hallowed forever, Day whereon Christ rose, breaking the kingdom of death. More majestic, perhaps, is its Latin original, Salve Festa Deis, Tota Venerbellius Albio, Qua Deus Infernum Visit et Astra Tenet. We could translate this perhaps a little bit more literally as Hail the festival day that is revered forever. God conquered hell and took hold of the stars. Throughout this hymn, Fortunatus' Christology provides a solid intellectual framework for this hymn. He writes, Seeing the human race was sunk in misery deep, thou wast made man, that thou mightst rescue man, that thou, the author of life and of all creation, wast buried in the tomb, treading the path of death to give us salvation. The gloomful bonds of hell were broken, the abyss shook with fear. As the light shone upon its brink, the brightness of Christ put to darkness the flight and made to fall the thick veils of everlasting light. Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. Until next week, peace.